Hi everybody. Today we're going to be looking at the snake challenge, which is a reverse engineering challenge on Hack the Box. It's an easy category and it's been retired for a long time. You can see here that the challenge was released nearly a thousand days ago, so like two and a half years ago. Um, so there should be plenty of walkthroughs out for this anyway. The reason I want to go through some, I'm going to try and make my way through some of the retired challenges on Hack the Box and put up some videos because in working through some of them myself, I found that even ones that have been retired for quite a while, there weren't, you know, you might spend a few hours working on it and then you actually want to learn how to solve it if you didn't solve it. And quite a lot, I can't find any walkthroughs out. So hopefully that'll change. Typically with the machines, as soon as a box is retired, uh, there's a PDF walkthrough and a video walkthrough straight up with it. So I would like to see that more with Hack the Box. If any of you guys are listening, I think really the, the challenge creators should be providing a solution so that when it's retired it's just automatically available. Or perhaps you could have like on the machines section where you have a list of user submitted walkthroughs, maybe you could do something like that, it'd be cool to see. But anyway, this challenge the description is short and concise, it says the flag should be in a format, hack the box, username, colon, password. So we know we're trying to find a username and a password. Let's download the file and we have our snake.py here. Let's just grab a copy of it. Uh, hack the box is the password to get into our zip. And the first thing you want to do is try and run the file. You'll see that it's set for, it was written in Python 2. Obviously, it's quite an old challenge, so we could convert it, but let's just go ahead and try and run in Python 2. And um, we get your number is 665, authentication required. Let's try admin. Wrong username, try harder. So we try that again. We see we get a different number this time, it's 47. And let's try admin 2. Wrong username, try harder. So let's have a look at the code. Not too much reverse engineering needed here since it's written in Python. We can just go and read the script, we can modify the script and um, debug it quite easily. And in the script we have some variables declared here. You can see that they've been declared in ints, so these are going to be probably ASCII characters, some of them. Uh, we have a lock, we have a password, lockpick with a random variable. And the lockpick is a random int that we, was, that we saw come up there. A lock is the random int times two. So we can go through and try and work out what's going on here. You can see here there's some actual, there's an XOR operation occurring. This is, I guess, where encryption is occurring. But the best thing to do here is try and work our way backwards. We know that we want to find the username and the password, and it's down here that it's actually asking for a username and password. So let's see what conditions need to be met. First condition is the pass is the username. So you can see here, enter username takes the user input and it compares it to a variable called slither, which is defined here. Slither is AA plus DB plus NN, and all these variables here. So we could just manually go through and Conf and you know append these values together and convert them to ASCII but because we are doing this in Python we can just go and modify the script and say just print out what slither is make life easy for us oh um, not that one let's run Python 2 snake and now you see here it's popped up with the username before it's even asked us for it so let's paste that in and it's taken that happily let's put in a password and we get wrong password, try harder. So we know what the username is. For the rest of the debugging, just so that we don't have to enter it in each time, what we can do is we can just take away this user input request and let's just say if slither equals slither, which it always will obviously, then go straight onto the password check. You see it's asking for the password. And now we need to find out what the password is. So the password check is here, it's taken in a user input. And for each character in the password we enter, it's going to loop through each character in the chars list, which you can see is here after this XOR operation. And it's going to loop through each, each character in this chars list and it's going to compare our passes character to that. And if, if they match, we're going to get good job, if not wrong password. So again, we can just print out, let's print out here this variable that's comparing our password character to. So if we put in our password as A, it's going to compare A to this. So let's see what that is. 
and it's compared it to you. Got wrong pass to try harder. Let's um, run it again. This time, put in you, and you can see we get good job. If we do it again and say UA, good job. You oh, that one gets wrong pass to try harder. <laughs> okay, I guess there's a limit, but um, you get the you get the point here anyway. It's only really validating that the first character matches the first character on their list. So. If we were following the same logic in terms of finding our username there, we would have probably tried to just print out the password variable here. So if you print out if you print that out, password, we get some decimal values. If we wanted to convert that to ASCII, we could say print and put in some quotes and then we'll join and then map the password to character um, so the character data type and if we print that out we get it's not that easy which we know is not the password because the, the password starts with a U so if we try and put in I we're gonna get wrong password so the reason I didn't try to do this password bit first is because you can see down here that it's not actually checking the password it's checking chars and chars is generated here so we we have um, let me see the password. So the password variable, I can't. It doesn't look like it's actually being used at all. Um, it's just there, I guess, to throw us off. So we try and print that and see. It's not that easy. But our chars variable, if we take that and print that instead, we get a different password. So if we paste that in, it's going to work because the first character matched. If we go to hack the box and try and put a password in here, hack the box, username was Anaconda, my password is that, and then submit. You'll see here we get incorrect flag. So let's go and have a look at the script again. And the thing here is whenever we're doing this XOR operation, we are XORing the lock with the key and then appending it and the key doesn't have as many characters as are in the the chars that we printed there so let's instead print chars and say we want to print up to the length of keys And you see here we've got a shorter password. Paste it in. It's going to be good job as as expected. And if we take this to hack the box and submit that, yeah, error challenge already solved because we've already done it. Uh, that's how we solve the snake reversing challenge. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.